Okay, so I got another computer in. What model is this? What specs does it have? And what am I going to do with it? This is Dell Dimension 5150. It has a Pentium 4, 3 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, an EVGA NVIDIA 9500 GT, and that's pretty much it. The problem with this machine is the hard drive is dead, so I am going to go ahead and replace it. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and throw a DVD burner in it and make it a dual burner system. So this is how you do it, really. While I'm working on it, I haven't talked about it. When I was looking at the system last time, I found something interesting. It has RAID 1. So we're going to RAID front for a while. And, yeah. What's wrong, as I said, what's wrong with this machine is the hard drive is dead. That's literally it. But this is actually a Dell BTX system. So, yeah, this one's a little easier to work on. I'm not worried about an ESD versus strike because this hard drive is dead. First, the system works though. I'm not, I'm not going to go anywhere else yet. But here's how we're going to do it. Because of my space constraints, in fact, I only three and a half inch notebook drives, three and a half inch desktop drives, I'm going to fit a notebook drive in. You might be thinking, just get an adapter. No, I don't have one. So I'm going to have to retrofit a drive. Well, we're taking the dead hard drive out of the caddy. So I don't have to deal with this. I can put the caddy back in. That could rot there. But here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to take this notebook drive and literally hook it up inside the system. This is a bit of a retrofit, if anything. So I'm just going to need you some modding done. Okay, so I've got the double-sided tape we're going to use. We're not going to use a lot of this because it's a hard drive and open drives have glass platters. So in this case, no, we're not going to use a lot of double-sided tape. We're just going to use one small piece, mount it upside down on this caddy, and plug it in and be done with it. By doing this, although I'm, I'm sacrificing speed, this is only a SATA 1.5 drive, but that'll be a good stopgap fix until I get around to getting a new drive for it. That's actually SATA 3, because the chips on this does support it. That was convenient. I didn't want to do it this way, but oh well. I kind of have to. So there we go. There's a hard drive retrofit on a Dell computer. That's how you do it. Double side tape, literally taped to the caddy. It's not very secure, so it's not going to work well. But as a temporary fitting, I don't see what's so bad about doing this. Okay, it's mounted. That's what it looks like. It's very cheap, it's very nasty looking, but we'll get the job done. Look at that, fits like a glove. Looks like the original, doesn't look like the original drive, but it mounts like the original drive. I'm good. But there's another thing I'm also gonna do to this machine. I'm going to pull a DVD-ROM, and I'm gonna upgrade that to a DVD burner. And you're going to wanna to disconnect this. On, the, on these Dell systems, you have to remove three screws from the optical drive. But what we're going to do is I'm going to put this DVD burner in. This is a burner like the other one. I'm not sure which one's quieter. It doesn't matter to me. And after this, I'm going to put Windows XP on, but for one very specific reason. I need to update the BIOS for another upgrade I plan to do with this machine. If, as soon as I can find a Pentium D945 for next to nothing, I found it on eBay for 13 bucks. I'm going to upgrade the processor in this machine too. Bump up to dual core, but that comes with a catch. If it doesn't, like, if the board is compatible, it's going to yell me say incompatible CPU, but I can gladly ignore this message because it doesn't matter. The message is there because only one board truly supports it right without yelling at you for it. But every other board will take it. Boom, we're done. Okay. The, this is the only concern I have with regards to the operating system I'm going to put on is the video card. It's an NVIDIA card. 
I have concern because those cards are known to be pain in the ass with Linux. And I have a good feeling it's going to fall under that problem category. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention. A brand new keyboard and mouse. That's right, I didn't take the original keyboard and mouse. I got a brand new set to use for this. Not bad, eh? Okay, let's unhook the MSI, and I'm going to hook this up and install Windows XP on there to the BIOS update. And I'm done with XP. This is the original hard drive. 160 gig SATA. This is a SATA 1.5 I read online, but the machine supports SATA 3. Okay, we're installing XP now. As I said, this is temporary because I want to put Linux on this machine. And that's why I'm concerned about a video card is I forgot to mention something in the video. This is a 64-bit capable Pentium 4 hyper-threading. I don't know a particular number off the top of my head, but this is a two megabyte Prescott processor. That's why it does it. And I can get Pentium D for it, as I said. I'm gonna do that. I've got a flash drive with the BIOS update on it. As the operating system this originally had, Windows XP, when, I, when it was bought brand new in 2006, the hard drive died in 2013, I believe. Yeah, I think 2012, actually. Maybe 2013, I really don't know. But this had Windows XP on it, which is why I'm not going to put it back on. Because Windows XP dies in April 8th of 2014. Next year, it's dead. Okay, we're going to update the BIOS now. This is always the scariest part of a computer work, a computer job. For a lot of people, because we screw up, the computer's dead. It's time to put Linux on. Never do a hard shutdown unless the system locks up. But in this case, I don't care because I'm not going to keep this operating system. Um, this usually takes a while to load up. So I'm going to let it load and come back to the video. This is why when I mentioned the NVIDIA graphics card, I had prom I had f fears for the worst, essentially, and it hit me. Frickin' video problem. Everything else shows up. If this isn't fixed by the proprietary driver, I cannot use the NVIDIA card, which is going to suck because I have to go to integrate in that case. Oh well. Uh, this is why NVIDIA cards don't play well in Linux machines. This is what it looks like beforehand, before I installed the NVIDIA proprietary driver. That was recommended, and this is why I got after the mess. I, didn't, I lost the UI in the dock, but I still have the operating system boot, so... Technically, I'm gonna pull the graphics card out, and it'll work again. But, yeah, that seems like my only option at this point, unfortunately. And I was really only take advantage of the graphics card on this PC.